Hey party people, Techno here, and in this series of videos we're going to be taking a look at some of the challenges from this year's Cyber Apocalypse CTF hosted by Hack the Box. And the first one of the challenges that we're going to take a look at was in the miscellaneous category, and it's called Character. So this challenge spins up a Docker container that we want to connect to over Netcat, and the IP address that I currently have is shown here in the port. Of course this is going to change every time we spin down that container and spin it back up. But if we connect to this, we are prompted with this question, which character or index of the flag do you want? Enter an index. Now we can presumably put an index of zero in here. That'll be the first character and knowing the structure of the hack the box flags, which always start with a capital HTB and then a curly brace, we would expect an H to come back and indeed it does. So if we do an index of one, we get the T. If we do an index of two, we get the B. Now this is clearly a very manual process. Uh, we can also assume that the flag isn't going to be short enough to make this practical. So what we really want to do here is automate this through something like a script so that we can pull all of these characters back and merge them together into the final flag. So that's fairly uh, simple to accomplish. By the way, if I didn't mention it, this challenge is classified as very easy. So one thing that we can do is just kind of look at what we're receiving as far as the responses go. So we kind of know how to slice and dice this to extract the values that we want. We really only want this one character. So every time we connect to this, we're going to receive this prompt. We're gonna have a colon here, which is going to then have the uh, index followed by it. And we're going to then have this character at index followed by another colon and then the character we actually want. Um, now, as soon as we get this response back, we're gonna be prompted one more time for this. So that'll be relevant whenever we take a look at the script that I constructed anyway to address this issue. So let's go ahead and kill this netcat shell and let's take a look at a bash script here to address this problem. And the one that I put together is simply called character.sh. Now in this, we have a couple variables. Of course, we need the IP address of the container at any point in time, as well as the port number. So those are the first two variables that we're putting in here. And then we're just going to do an iteration. So actually, let me cancel back out of this and let you or, uh, show you how I arrived at sort of the values that I'm using here. So if we connect to that netcat instance again, we can kind of start to get an idea of how long this flag might actually be. If we request an index, say, of 50, we're still getting a character back. So clearly the flag is at least that many characters long. If we do an index of 100, again, we still get a character back. So it's longer than 100 characters. If we do a 110 here, we can see that the index is out of range, so we're no longer returning one of the characters of the flag, making that a, you know, at the very least, the flag itself is less than 110 characters, so 110 iterations will cover all of the characters that we need to. Uh, and any of these index out of ranges will be handled by the rest of the script. But if we really wanted to drill into this, we could start backing this off. We see that 105 is still an index out of range. If we go to 104, we have an index out of range. If we go to 103, we have that final curly brace of the flag. So we know that the flag itself is 104 characters wrong, or 104 characters long, right? Index zero to index 103. So that's how we arrived at the iterator here. Uh, we'll just leave it at the 110. It doesn't matter, like I said, as far as how the rest of this, uh, uh, this response is gonna be handled, the blank spaces or the index out of range rather doesn't, doesn't bother us at all. So for any integer in the range of 0 to 110, we are going to do this. We're going to assign to this R variable the output of this netcat command. And I'm going to use the tack q and 5 flag here. Because as we saw, it continued to spit out output. I want to make sure that the connection closes each time. So we're not going to uh, leave that open. We're going to rerun this netcat connection each time and request a new index. So the output of that will be assigned to this R variable, which we will then feed into the cut command and key off those colons. So as you remember, there were two colons within the output that we're gonna be dealing with. One preceded the index that we requested and one precedes the character returned, but then also the additional prompt that we receive after that. So the initial cut command here is going to divide that. We're gonna take field number three, which is gonna contain the character that we're after. And then we're going to feed that line into another cut command where we're going to delineate on spaces, take field one, which will be the character that we're requesting, and assign that to this letter variable, 
which will then be appended to a file flag.txt. And once all of these iterations are through, finally, we will simply use the translate command to remove all of the new lines from the flag.txt file and echo the flag out. So if all of this works, what we will ultimately have is the flag in its uh, complete state at the very end. So let's go ahead and run this. And I also did the tack x at the beginning of the script so that all of the uh, commands will be echoed to our shell here. And we can kind of, rather than just have no output at all, we can kind of see how this is functioning. So we can see the letter, the echoes, the assignment of these variables here, and we are capturing all of those characters. And we're also eliminating the additional prompt that would follow those because that's really gonna mess up our results. So we're at 80, 90 iterators here. This should be finished quite shortly. And if everything worked as planned, we get the output of the flag. And we see it a couple times because we also, due to that tack x, we see the assignment to the flag variable, we see the echo command, and then finally the output of the echo command, which is the flag to the character challenge. So that's it for this one. We will take a look at some of the other challenges here moving forward, but until then, thank you very much for watching everybody. I do truly appreciate it. Take care and until next time, I will catch you later.